Uh, so I'm Stylish Kumar, uh, CEO of Baya Systems. And at Baya, the fundamental problem we are trying to solve is the data movement problem. Um, so as you know that uh, compute architectures are being reinvented because of the advent of AI being the primary compute platform. And as a result of this, you know, everyone is redesigning the entire compute stack, starting from silicon to software to systems. And in this new era, one of the critical bottlenecks that is coming in is the data movement. How do you move data between compute, I.O., memory, and caches? And how do you scale the system in a very efficient way where data movement is not a bottleneck? If you look at NVIDIA, one of the biggest value that NVIDIA brings is they can scale their architecture to thousands and thousands of nodes. Therefore, they can fit in really the largest AI models. And the problem they have solved is really how do you move data between all these compute elements without being a central point, a bottleneck, and also maintaining low latency. So that's their proprietary architecture. And this bottleneck is present in practically every system today as you know, they're you know, scaling. So the, that's the fundamental problem we are trying to solve. And our focus is really on the core of that problem, which is the on-chip network. How do you manage all the data movement? How do you support all the protocols? How do you make sure that data is close to the compute? So that's the fundamental problem we are trying to solve. So when we talk about on-chip communication, um, there are standards through which the compute elements communicate with each other. Um, like, you know, in the old days in the internet world, you know, IP and TCP was the communication language. In the compute world, um, there are different sets of protocols, and these are usually load and store semantics protocols. Like Intel in its days, you know, used to have uh, scale-up protocols. Uh, over the years, I think the, those protocols have evolved quite a bit. So today we are in a world where, you know, we have these protocols and the compute elements talk, use these protocols to communicate with each other. And if I look at the protocol landscape today, um, we have a few dominant ones, upcoming ones. Um, UA-Link is certainly one of them. NV-Link is probably the most dominant as of today in terms of scale-up, but it's a proprietary protocol from NVIDIA. Uh, UA-Link has come as a sort of open source version of uh, a compute protocol that you know, big names are behind it. Um, and it basically provides a load store semantics um, to scale the system where compute elements can talk to each other. Um, there are protocols that also support cache coherency. So when you build these systems, they're usually they're, they're caches and you have to maintain cache coherency. So there are protocols out there that you know, also support cache coherency. On that front, I think ARM, you know, Chai is, a, is, is the most dominant standard out there. Um, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, they have their own proprietary ones, but in terms of the open, ARM is the, is the dominant one. So I'll say in terms of protocol stack today, um, you know, ARM standards are obviously the most prevalent, uh, both non-coherent and coherent, and UA Link is a new standard coming to uh, provide the scale-up needed in the data center uh, architectures. The, the protocols are absolutely great. Um, you know, one of the cornerstone of building a high-performance data connectivity architecture is that all the endpoints talk the same language. Um, so these protocols, we have consolidation around those. UCI has become a chiplet interface. The protocol UA-Link, Axie, Chai, these are the protocols through which the computes talk to each other. So that, that's, that's a great foundation to start from. So once we have this foundation established, the next problem is that how do you use these protocols and build a highly scalable data communication architecture? Um, so that's the, that's the technology that we are developing. Uh, so if the, the way our technology works is we look at a system as a unified thing where you know, we look at all the compute elements, memory elements, I.O. elements across chiplets, across sockets as one big entity. And then we start to break it down in terms of data movement, interfaces, protocols, and then we build a system level formal model of the entire data communication in, this, in the system. And once we, once we represent the, the entire communication in that, in that format, it opens up opportunities to create lot, to create new architectures, new optimizations. So once we have formalized the requirement, after that our software platform um, can create unique fabric architectures where all the requirements that we captured are supported while maintaining lowest, you know, prefer, lowest power and lowest area in terms of silicon cost. Um, our solution is also highly chiplet aware. Um, so as you know, that chiplet is a new mechanism through which systems are scaling, um, and it's 
critical that you know whatever data movement architecture you have is very much aware of the chiplet architecture, the chiplet interfaces, and also our fundamental architecture is based on chiplet scaling. So you know every component of the architecture, including namespace, protocols, interfaces, boundaries, everything is you know based on assumption that the system is going to, going to be composed of chiplets. So our solution naturally scales. As you scale the system you know, using chiplets, our solution naturally scales. Um, and you know, the way we have built our solution is you know, it can both scale up and scale down. Because we do believe that you know, there is going to be opportunities you know, in low to medium performance silicon designs as well as high performance silicon designs. So that's why you know, we have powered our entire architecture and design with a highly sophisticated software stack which can configure it so that it can be used efficiently both in the low end as well as high end you know, uh, systems. So we started in uh, March of uh, 2023. Um, we had a really quick start. Um, Jim Keller, um, you know, who is currently CEO of TenStorrent, um, I worked with him very closely at Intel. And uh, he is the one who actually you know, called me, um, I think in Feb of 2023. And you know, he said that, look, you know, the entire silicon industry is going to be transformed. And in this new age, we need to reinvent the fabric as well, because fabric is going to become the bottleneck. Um, so let's start a company. Um, he just made a call in Feb. Uh, by March, we had funding. We had money in the bank. Matrix was the lead investor. Uh, we had the first you know, set of people, about 10 people, on board as well. So in March, literally, the company was ready with money in the bank, with the starter team in place. And since then, you know, we have been moving really fast. Uh, in seven quarters, we have built the foundation product. Uh, we have shipped to multiple customers. We have a very rich set of you know, design wind and pipelines uh, there. And uh, now we are basically at a point where we have a solid foundation. And now we are scaling our commercial organization so that we can grow and we can you know, get into new markets, new geos. Um, there are big opportunities in Asia, in Europe. So we are setting up offices over there. Uh, there are big opportunities in different market segments. We are focused on you know, high performance, automotive, data center, infrastructure. So for each segment, we are creating you know, force so we can focus on those, create the right features for, for those segments. So we are really you know, growing in every dimension, growing across geos, growing across market segments. Um, and you know, we see a lot of silicon design starts. So from timing perspective also, it's amazing because you know, every, every design requires a high performance fabric. So all of these things has come together and I think this is a perfect opportunity and perfect timing to scale the company.